guys are playing around with the with the code and you're going to uncommon code with me, switch to the workshop branch. Uh, if you stay on master, the app should be functioning. So download and compile it. There's also an APK binary under the releases tab uh, that you can uh, download and start playing with, and then you can, you know, broadcast yourself to your neighbors. But anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for coming this morning. I know, uh, you know, Saturday morning, a bunch of nerds getting up early. That's uh, was a thing for me. So if you're like me, I appreciate you guys coming out. I'm uh, Richard Benaziak. I'm a senior Android nerd at the Nerdery, and uh, so when I call you guys nerds, it's a it's a term of infection. Part of the term of infection. But uh, all right, well, yeah, thanks again for coming. Let's, uh, what are we gonna be talking about today? So, we're gonna be talking about the Google Nearby APIs. And uh, show of hands, who's ever developed a, an application that, that tried to communicate with another device over Bluetooth? All right, show of hands, how much did that suck? <laughs> there we go, yep, so 133% yep, so of you say that sucked. Uh, because more people, all right, anyway. So, all right, well, anyway, what is Google Nearby? So we asked about, about Bluetooth and, and how that was horrible. Google Nearby is essentially a collection of APIs um, that allow for two things. There's, there's two separate API sets. There's Nearby Messages, which allows you to actually uh, send and receive uh, messages, like a, a JSON encoded string, directly from one device to another um, over Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, Wi-Fi, um, and they actually have a mode that uses an ultrasonic modem because, hey, that's cool, why not, right? Um, and then there's nearby connections. Nearby connections is great for setting up a connection with, with devices that are within the, the same room as you, but it sets up a more like a client-server model so you can, uh, you know, initiate a peer-to-peer game, -peer gaming session. We're going to talk about messages because that's way easier and, um, and I'm lazy. So... <laughs> Let's see, oh, another good thing to point out that this is cross-platform. So these are available for both Android and iOS. Uh, who here develops for iOS? All right, you guys have it way easier because uh, apparently you just need a CocoaPod and like three lines of code and it just works. Uh, for Android, everyone else, we're gonna, we're gonna spend about the next 40 minutes talking about what you guys need to do. This, hey, the system's ready, so that's good. Uh, so if you did take a, take a look at that GitHub link why that was up there, we're going to develop an app called Nerd Alert. And uh, Nerd Alert is essentially, I think it was recommended uh, when we started pitching this idea of how we could would demonstrate this, like Tinder for nerds. And uh, I thought, yeah, I'm like, all right, that's, that's probably not going to play to our core strengths, but um, let, let, let's do it anyway. So essentially what the Nerd Alert app does here is it allows you to, you know, it takes your picture out of your contacts, it lets you enter a name and a tagline, and then when you hit the, the floating action button at the bottom, it actually starts broadcasting. Uh, so it's going to start broadcasting your information uh, via one of these Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, ultrasound mechanisms uh, using the nearby APIs. It'll also start subscribing and listening for people in your area. Uh, and then it'll display them in a, in a recycler view there. Uh, because this is using Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy, it does actually hook in and allow you to look for beacons that are registered to your app as well. So uh, there, I've got a couple of beacons up here broadcasting Bluetooth Low Energy. The app will pick those up as well. Uh, Eddie Stone beacons, I should say. So, uh, 
Uh, the first thing you need to do with, uh, with anything, who's developed an app using Google Play services before? Some of the closed black box stuff. So you guys are familiar with the, uh, with the Google Play services song and dance. And that means when you're gonna create an app that are, that's going to be using these if you need the API keys, you have to go to your Google Developers Console, uh, console.developers.google.com, create a project for your app, and then go to the section called um, called enabling your APIs. Uh, and you will need to enable the nearby messages API. Uh, there is a quota for it. The quota is, is essentially insane. Google wants us to make it um, you know, free for everyone to use, but they, they do want to have a mechanism to cut off apps that are abusing it. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. Uh, so that's why they have they have this quota system in place. And so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to enable the API, and then if you want to restrict your API key only to your app, you have to then take the SHA-1 checksum of your signing key, debug when you're using debug, and then your release your release key when you're if you're actually going to release your app. Then you have to associate it with the with the uh, Google Play Developer Console account and all that good stuff. Uh, it's all documented under the getting started, so we're not going to talk about that too much. The good news for you is if you check out the GitHub project, I've already done that. We, I put the keys up there. Um, you know, we can we can play with it until until we get yelled at and say not to do that anymore. But uh, in the meantime, yeah, you should be good to go if you just wanted to download and compile the app and get started. So yeah, we're uh, the workshop code a little bit more. Um, we're looking at uh, on GitHub slash the nerdery. There should be something called nerd alert. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, if you just want to take a look at the completed code that's on master, we're going to be walking through the workshop branch today. Um, Everything is completely functional. It's just commented out, and we're going to essentially go through uncommented and talk about what it does. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at that. Thanks to the, uh, the wonders of VGA, you're going to be able to see half the lines. Everyone else further back, yes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> VGA, again. So if we're looking through the code, we're going to try to blow through this pretty quickly. Uh, the first thing you actually need to do is, for those of you who have never used Google Play Services, Google Play Services is sort of like a black box where there's a whole bunch of new APIs that are made available by Google for use in Android and iOS, but they're, they're not baked into the Android framework themselves. Um, and it's really easy to add this functionality. You just have to, if you're um, using the new you know, Gradle build system as you probably should be, essentially all you have to do is just add this to your dependencies. So we're gonna go through there. We're gonna say, Add Google Play services. Uh, if you saw that and you're playing along, uh, essentially the, the README on the GitHub will show you uh, everything that we're going to talk about, and it's they're commented out throughout the code. Workshop one, two, three, all the way to nine. If we make it to nine, I think we're doing good. So then you can uh, Control Shift F in Android Studio and just search for those tags and then delete those comments. This is the hard part because now we get a Gradle sync. And this will take a second. So while that's syncing, the, uh, the yeah, now we've got Google Play services, so we can start calling these APIs. So if we bounce over to, uh, for example, in the code, we have main activity. Yeah, this code is not exactly designed to be extensible and reusable or following some programming best practices, but it does make it really easy to make a presentation on and, and talk about. Uh, so, do as I say, not as I do, I guess. Um, let's see, so 
the next thing we're going to do now that we have the services is we should be able to go in and make a new member variable for the Google API client. And this is going to be our gateway to using these APIs from Google Play Services. Uh, this is how you're going to be able to use all of the, all the Google Play Services APIs. <coughs> by going through here and building your Google API client with the builder pattern. So what we'll see here is we're going to initialize this, we're gonna, we're gonna build a new client, uh, and then we're gonna add a list of APIs that we want to use. Well, for the cases of this demo, we're going to be using the nearby messages API. There's the nearby connections API, uh, you may be familiar with Fuse Location Services, that's a really good one, um, and then any of the hundreds of other things that are added uh, via Google Play Services. Then we're going to, um, in this case, anytime you connect to the Google Play Services API client, you have to have a set of connection callbacks and a, a connection failed listener. Uh, in this case, we're just going to extend our activity and override these methods right here. So in this case, we're going to say that our activity is going to implement the uh, connection callbacks and the connection fail listener, which of course now if we go down the red line rabbit hole, it's going to say, oh, yeah. those are, you know, those are the famous red squigglies, not the uh, dash broken line. Looks good on my screen. Uh, so now what we have to go to, and actually we have to enable these callbacks. So now we have unconnected. And unconnected means we've successfully connected to the Google Play Services uh, API, and then we can start doing some things. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to be storing the state in shared preferences, just an easy way to stash a flag to say whether we're publishing or subscribing. Or, uh, in this case, what happens when you press the fab, as I mentioned before, we're going to start publishing our information and then be subscribing to to other people that are broadcasting, so we'll be listening. Uh, and then we'll go in and take a look at the, at the publish and, and subscribe methods in a second. Uh, let's see, so we need to have on connected. And then we also have on connection suspended. On connection suspended is, uh, I don't know, for some reason our connection was suspended. <laughs> I think you can do that. There's a couple causes that are enumerated. Uh, the network got lost, or the Google Play services got disconnected, uh, you know, Google went down, in which case your app not functioning is probably not your biggest concern. Uh, at the moment, we have to figure out why Google went down. So <laughs> anyway, we're just going to pop it, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to pop a toast in this case. And then on connection failed, that's, you know, a little bit more prevalent. Maybe you don't have network access, something went wrong. In, the, in this case here, we're just going to pop a toast as well. All right, so where are we? We have our, our stuff overwritten here. So we've implemented our callbacks. Let's take a look at where we are in the agenda. We've made it all the way through workshop three because uh, you know, I'm trying to fly through this to make sure we can get to everything. Everyone keeping up so far? This should be pretty pretty basic if you've ever implemented Google Play services before. Uh, we haven't even gotten into the nearby stuff yet, but that all starts right now. So, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to implement uh, what uh, I defined as a nearby interface. And so our, acti our activity is going to implement this interface because we're going to then access some of these methods that we define here via fragments and fragments calling into activity things. For the sake of portability, you should have an interface to do that stuff. And so you're asking, well, what is nearby interface? Do I get that for free? Well, we just defined it here really quickly. This is where we have our publish, unpublish, subscribe, and un unsubscribe methods. And uh, we're, since we're implementing this interface, we're going to uh, just go ahead and, and uh, override these in the activity. And 
and we're back to red squigglies because we need to implement these these methods. Um, in that case, oh, I did skip over bouncing around. Um, and basically, when our activity starts and stops, we're going to we then have to. That's where we're actually going to connect to the Google Play Services client, to the Google API client. So if we're if we're starting our activity and we're not connected, or yeah, we're not connected, then we're going to connect. Uh, and then on stop, we're going to disconnect. And then like I showed before with the on connected, that's where we have our publish, unpublish, subscribe, unsubscribe. That's going to be the first connection through. So now here's where we're actually going to implement these methods, and this is the fun part. So lots of red squigglies here. And what exactly are we doing? Well, when we call our publish method, what we're going to do is first we're going to check to see if we're connected to the Google API client, because if we're not, none of the nearby stuff is going to work. So we're going to do you know, one last shot to try to go through and do that. Uh, then we're going to create a new message. Um, message is the format that is, uh, that is actually uh, the class that's sent over the wire. And note that it's not the android.os message, it's the com.google.android.gms.nearby.messages.message. That's of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, I have a, a util class that we're going to talk about in a second that essentially is going to um, encode this. So we're going to talk about how we're, we're going to JSON encode that and send that over the wire or over the Bluetooth uh, in a second. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking a, uh, we're passing into publish a, in a neighbor object. And the neighbor object is just a, a, a class that we define that has some stuff in it. Um, in this case, the only thing really to worry about is we have a name, a string, a tagline, a string, and an encoded photo, which is a base64 encoded JPEG uh, object, um, which is then, of course, a string. So that's great because now we're just going to use JSON. We're going to serialize this. We're going to throw it into a nearby message, and then it, magic is going to happen. Um, magic can happen up to about 10 kilobytes worth of magic. So um, since this is being sent uh, directly onto broadcast to people that are listening, uh, you don't want to be using this for large file transfers or whatnot. Um, in the case of this demonstration, we're going to pass a name, a tagline, and uh, I encoded photo, but this is a real small 100 by 100 pixel uh, JPEG encoded just to show like the badge and the list of people. You would probably want to use this for maybe um, to, to communicate a token for some backend. Uh, if you needed to use this to download large assets, you, you would maybe have your app call to the server and say, hey, I, I need assets to give to this person, get a token back. You can shoot that over the wire um, to the other person. Then they would hit your server. So this is a this is just a really convenient way of you know you could use this instead of sending instead of sending a URL to the user you could actually go up and press the button and then just have it magically appear. Uh, that's one way one one thing you could possibly do. Uh, and then all the other stuff in here is yeah we have a, a transient actual uh, JSON encoder and then a, a, a transient bitmap. So what happens is then when we receive our neighbor object, uh, we're going to deserialize it. We're going to get that base64 encoded uh, bitmap, and then we're just going to inflate it. But then we're not actually going to send that bitmap uh, back across. So that's our neighbor object, and that just has helper methods for all of that stuff. back into our main activity and see where we were. This is where we have, uh, so yep, this is going to be, that's our neighbor object, and we're going to talk about encoding in our util class in a second. But now, because the, 
now we, since we're published, we need to figure out how we're actually going to publish this. And once again, with the builder pattern, we're going to try to get rid of some of these things, and then we'll talk about what we're doing. Uh, the first thing you need to do is when you're publishing is actually call a strategy. And there's some documentation on this. But I have one statically defined in our, our sweet till class called message strategy. And the message strategy here is actually where you're going to get to define a couple things. Uh, first, you get to set your time to live. So we can say we're going to broadcast this for X number of seconds and then we're going to stop. And, uh, the one thing that's important to note about nearby is it's going to actively enable your Bluetooth radio. So if you have Bluetooth LE, that's good, uh, because that's going to use considerably less power. But it will spin up a legacy Bluetooth connection. It will also try to communicate over Wi-Fi. And then it will, uh, depending on um, your settings, will try to do that ultrasonic modem, where it sends out in all directions <coughs> from your speaker, and the other device's microphone picks it up. And then it tries to negotiate some key exchange that way. Um, all of that uses battery. So the downside to nearby is when you're actually when you're actually publishing, um, you are using three to four times as much battery as normal. So we, this is definitely not something you can be leaving you, you can leave running in the background. In fact, the newest version of the API they actually forbid you from passing in an application context. You have to have a foreground activity context to call this. Um, and and we'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, time to live, you obviously don't want to leave this running forever. We're going to use uh, whatever is defined as the default seconds. Uh, we could not have actually set this because it's the default, but for the sake of completeness, it's in there. And then the discovery mode as well, we're going to call the default. If we bounce in to actually see what these are, uh, the uh, <laughs> seconds infinite, is that, that's awesome, that's max in. Um, max signed in, uh, or infinite, max is one day, uh, default seconds is five minutes. Uh, whatever, that you can define those as whatever you want to be. The interesting thing though is the scan mode and the, dis and the distance type. Uh, so scan mode is basically what method you want to use. Default means it uses all those, Bluetooth low energy, Bluetooth Wi-Fi, ultrasound. Um, uh, Bluetooth, not ultrasound, Bluetooth. Bluetooth, low energy, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, and then you actually have a distance type. So the distance type is default, which means anywhere in your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi connectivity radius. So that's like 100 meters, 300 feet, if you're on two boats in an ocean uh, with no objects or people in between you. Uh, realistically, probably like 30 feet. Uh, but the, where the ultrasound part comes in is with distance type earshot. So that's where you're going to actually limit this to be more intimate. And earshot means in a quiet room, you're about four, within three to four feet away from that person. That's when it's going to use the ultrasound to negotiate a key exchange to say that, yep, we are actually, we are actually close, close enough to each other. Uh, you know, people in the front row can, at a conference or whatever, we can exchange information, but I'm not broadcasting my information to people in the next conference room. Um, and then, like with the strategy, if like we were talking about the different methods, you can also set Bluetooth LE uh, only, and that's if you have if you just want to start looking for beacons that are registered to your app. Uh, if you don't if you don't actually want to publish, but you just want to subscribe, uh, maybe when the when a user opens your app in the in the store, you want to see if there's any beacons offering special promotions or something. Your app can use nearby just to to quickly scan for uh, BLE beacons. left. Let's see if we can do this. So that's how we're defining our strategy. Uh, the, let's see. Oh, that's still me, so I'm not going to add one more. There we go. So now that's with our, our uh, strategy that we talked about. Now you're actually going to have a callback for uh, on expired. 
And so this is what's going to happen. This is the callback that you're going to get when your TTL expires or new with the latest version of the APIs. When you actually start using nearby, it's going to put a notification up for you in the, the notification area. Um, that's for, I'm assuming, privacy concerns. They don't want someone to turn this on and then leave it running and have no indication that you know it's actually sending out sensitive information. So you'll get a notification that nearby is in use in your notification area. You can swipe that down and it'll show you what app is using nearby and it'll give you a kill switch there. If that user hits the stop and the kill switch, it's going to call this uh, unexpired callback. So if, um, in this case, for our unexpired callback, we're just going to set publishing to false. Now we have a pending result with a status. Now which status do we need? We need, this is the GMS status, Google Play Services. Okay, so now this line right here, line uh, 259, this is literally calling the API and saying publish this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call nearby.messages.publish. We're going to pass in our Google API client that we set up before. We're going to pass in our message, which uh, our message object, which uh, we encoded, and then we're going to pass in the options which we built that has the strategy and the, and the timeout callback in it. Then we're going to actually get a uh, a result object. On the result object, we're going to set our new our callbacks here for success and failure. Um, if we actually do successfully publish, we'll get an on result with a uh, is success, in which case then we know that we're successfully publishing. Uh, we can set the state in our app. Start in a little, they do recommend that you put in some type of uh, you know activity indicator, a little you know pro indeterminate progress bar or something like that. <coughs> in which case this is how we're going to control our state here. If it was unsuccessful, well then we have, we have things to worry about. Uh, and there's, some re there's a couple reasons that it can be unsuccessful, and we'll talk about that next, as soon as we start uh, doing some more uncommon pasta, which is like copy pasta, but easier. So now we have the same thing in reverse for unpublish, and it's a pretty much exactly the same thing. We're going to take our message that we've been publishing and we're going to pass it in and we're going to call nearby.messages.unpublish here on line 298. And it's the exact same thing. We've got the same set of callbacks. On result is success. We're going to set our state to uh, publishing false. Um, otherwise, if there's a problem, we're going to go into our handle unsuccessful nearby result method, which we'll talk about in a second. And so that's unpublish. Next step is subscribe. So you can actually subscribe and publish independently of each other. For the sake of this app, every time they turn on the feature, they press the fab, we're going to both publish and subscribe, and then publish and unsubscribe simultaneously. But you could definitely just be subscribing to listen to Beacons, or you could just be publishing if you're antisocial and don't care about anyone. So with subscribe, we have our subscribe options, just like we had our publish options. And we're going to build that. And this is essentially where we're setting our, our subscribe strategy. Our subscribe strategy is exactly the same as our publish strategy. The same, the same set of options, um, same, same mechanisms, same timeout. We have our subscribe callback, which is also how we're going to handle our unexpired. So basically, if someone says stop using nearby, we're going to say, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's stop subscribing as well. And now what's different with the actual subscribe API call here on line 349 is you have nearby.messages.subscribe. And in this case, instead of taking a Google API client and a message that we're going to publish and some options, we're actually taking the, the uh, Google API client a message listener and, um, and our options. The listener is actually going to handle the, you know, what is actually going to happen when it, when it sees a, a 
message on the wire. So message listener is undefined because I can't read my own notes. <coughs> Skipped over that. There's some initialized message listener that we're going to do in the on create. Listener to be defined. And then we do need to talk about initialized message listener. But first, let's go and do our unsubscribe. Unsubscribe, just like subscribe, exactly in reverse. This one has one extra step that is on unsubscribe, we're going to clear our list of people that we, that we know about. Just because if you're subscribing and you have people publishing, you're going to get, as we're going to see next, an on found and an on lost. Um, if they are found, obviously you can add them to the list. But if you stop subscribing, you're never going to see the on lost. So those people just get to live forever in our list. In which case, we're just going to clear out our list when we are no longer subscribing. Let's just do that. All right. And now, let's take a look at our message listener. So this is with our onfound. So on found, uh, that means we actually have a message waiting for us on the, on the wire. Uh, what we're going to do is, this is going to be in message format, uh, in the, the nearby message format. We're going to take our message and we're going to deserialize it. And we'll take a look at that when we get into our nearby API until. And we're going to get that neighbor object back out of it. So what we're going to do in, on found is we're going to take a look at what that message type actually is. You can set the, uh, there's going to be three things that you can set on a message. You can set the namespace, which is the name of your app that you have defined in uh, Google Play Developer Console, or Google Developer Console. And that just allows you only to be looking for, only receiving beacons that are registered to your app, only receiving broadcasts from your app, not from other apps here in, the, in your area. Um, in this case, uh, so then you can also set the type which is just, uh, it, it would just be like, uh, you know, J, or application slash JSON, set your mind type, um, or you can set it to be whatever you want. Um, in this case, beacons that are registered to my account broadcast a type of beacon. Um, and then other people, neighbors, uh, it's gonna broadcast type nerd. So, what this set, section of code is doing, is if it's a of type beacon, we're just going to add it to our beacons fragment. And if it's of type anything else, else, uh, we're going to add it to our uh, nerds, nerds fragment. And so yeah, we're just going to figure out what fragment to add it to, and then we're going to call add on it. Uh, on lost is exactly the same thing. Someone's no longer publishing. We get a message that says, hey, this message is no longer here. We're going to deserialize that and we're going to remove that from our list. So that's actually how you're going to publish and you're going to subscribe, and then you have a message listener that's listening for messages coming and going. Now, the last thing that we really have left to do is what happens if you try to publish and subscribe and you have a you get an error back? Well, there's one real specific reason that's going to handle it, that's going to happen, and that is because you, the user will be prompted for permission to use this feature. So this is a, a runtime feature request similar to what was introduced in Lollipop, but it's not within the Android framework in Marshmallow, sorry, uh, but this is, not a, uh, this is not a framework runtime permission, this is a Google Play Services runtime permission. So 
so what will happen is if the user has not granted permission for your app to use the nearby API, it's going to return a nearby message status code of app not opted in. So if the app is not opted in, we're going, uh, we're going to basically say, okay, well, status, uh, do, do what you have to do to make this so. And so we're gonna call status start resolution for result. And what that's going to do is, this is actually what's going to pop up the dialog and say, hey, your app name wants to be using the nearby permission, uh, the nearby functionality. And then it, there's going to be a more info because no one knows what that means, right? Because Google just makes up words to describe their services. So then it's going to say, hey, you're going to give this user access to use your Bluetooth, your Wi-Fi, um, and your microphone and speakers. Well, not speakers, but microphone for recording the ultrasound. And so then they can either approve or deny. Um, if they are denied, we're just going to keep getting this um, app not opted in, in which case we're just going to be annoying and every time they press the button, keep prompting them for permissions. Eventually, it'll show up a, a, a tick box that'll say, hey, stop, don't ask me for this anymore. I don't want your app to have these permissions, in which case we're going to continuously get app not opted in, and then it's gonna look like the app's broken because we don't have it, in this application, we don't have an error uh, workflow set up for the sake of the, de uh, the demonstration. There's also another prominent uh, error condition you can get, and that's a network error. Remember we said before that we have to have an API key and we have to authenticate with Google for permission to use these APIs. So you, even though your app is communicating peer-to-peer, -peer, they do both, both, uh, both devices need to have internet access so they can go up and authenticate the API key. Kind of lame because a great feature of nearby would be when you don't have internet access and you can't access the cloud to the cloud to uh, you know get a, a token from your server or do a push notification. But that is that is what um, that is what is required of us. So we're going to check to see if we have if we don't have permission, we're going to ask the user for permission. If we don't have internet connectivity. We're going to say, hey, we need network access. Uh, go into your settings and do that. Uh, and if there's anything, any other error, uh, we should handle it uh, gracefully, but we're not. We're just going to pop up a generic message. So we've got about uh, five minutes left, which I say we have about nine and a half minutes mm -hmm. left. So we're going to try to fly through this now. The uh, last thing that we have here is we're going to, um, when we're prompting the user for nearby permission, and we're requesting resolution, where when the user either grants us or denies us permission, we're gonna get on activity result with an intent in it, re, uh, request code, the result code, and some intent data. If, it's, um, if we get a result okay back, we're going to publish and subscribe, and if we get a result canceled back, we're going to pop up to the user, hey, we need this permission to do this. Uh, otherwise, this app is kind of silly. Uh, you would handle that so that's essentially the what we're doing with um, handle unsuccessful nearby status result in that method. So then finally, let's take a look at our nearby API util and see how that we're actually going to encode our message. So what we're going to say here is in this static helper method, we have a new nearby message. And this is what's going to do our serialization is we're actually going to make a new JSON or JSON serializer and we're going to pass in our, our neighbor object as a payload. Well now you can see here that we have a, a something called wrapper. And what is wrapper? Well wrapper is just a class that we have to find down here. This is what's interesting about actually passing a message. If two messages are identical, like say we have two John Doe's, uh, and they're just passing the name John Doe across. It's going to actually show up as one message. It's going to um, it's going to look like a duplicate. So you're only going to re the listener is only going to return one of those to you. So you just don't have you 
know, if, if the user is coming and going and, and there's a connectivity problem, it's not going to know if, if it lost access to that message. So it's only going to show you one of those. What wrapper is going to do is actually um, just add a, an instance identifier. So this could be, you could, you know, generate a random number or something that we're just going to tack on to make John Doe A's message on the wire look different from John Doe B's. Um, there's actually, in Google Play Services, there is a concept of an instance ID, where we can just say, hey, get the ID for this instance of this app, and it will, it'll handle that, generating something, something similar to a, a UUID, but that is uh, guaranteed to be unique for that particular instance. So that what we're doing here is now we're taking our payload, we're JSON encoding it, um, and then we're, uh, we're going to add our neighbor payload to this wrapper that has an ID, and then we're going to JSON encode that, set our type to be type nerd as opposed to type beacon, and we're going to return that as a message, and that message is what we actually sent to the publish API. In the reverse case of this, we're going to parse a nearby message. So when unsubscribe, on message found, or on message lost, we're gonna get this message object, and we have to figure out what to do with it. Um, we're just actually going to make a new JSON serializer, and we're going to actually call nearby message dot get content. We're going to uh, take our content, and we're going to take our content, and we're actually going to uh, get the bytes and put it into a uh, a byte array. And then we're going to deserialize that and put it into our wrapper. And then we're going to get the payload out of the wrapper, which was actually the, the neighbor object. So, that said, I think how much time do I have left? A couple minutes? A couple minutes, yeah. All right, so let's, uh, I guess, you know, we flew through this really quickly. I apologize about that, a lot to cover. But it's all open source, it's all on GitHub. Uh, check that out, github.com slash the nerdery slash nerd alert. Uh, you can download this app and then and walk through it. Uh, also, if you guys want to play with it during the rest of the conference, just sideload the APK that's under the release sections there, and then uh, you can walk around and, and broadcast some information out to your uh, to, to everyone else and uh, picture of yourself and, and funny things. Uh, so that said, a uh, couple minutes for questions. So we were chatting last night. You we were. Um, To say uh, just I have absolutely no idea, but if I were to guess, I would say that Samsung devices are broken because Samsung. <laughs> um, 